coming to you here from Seoul. Now, I just wanted to make this video. It's just going to be a short video talking about what it's like to be a cyclist here in Seoul. Because, you know, when I try to do research about this topic, you know, there's a lot about what it's like to be a cyclist if you look like this. Uh, and not so much if you look like this. Now, this isn't meant to be a debate about what's better or worse. I do a lot of bikepacking myself. But I also am the type of cyclist that likes to chase PRs. And generally, I do like to train and I'm always looking to improve myself as a cyclist. So if you're also this type of cyclist, uh, stick around because this is what I'm going to talk about. Now, while I'm talking, I'm just going to overlay a video of the bike path here because that's really the star of the show. Uh, this cycling infrastructure here. If you're really focused on training, then yes, you know, Seoul is amazing. If you train regularly, you know the value of having flat, uninterrupted roads. And Seoul's vast network of cycling lanes are just that. I actually didn't realize how expansive the network is. I thought the path just ran along the, the Han River, which is where I'm at right now. Right there. Uh, I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> Yeah, that's the Han River right there. And you can see it's very busy. It's actually a Saturday today. It's probably not the best day to film this video, but uh, when you look at the, the footage of the, the bike lane, it's usually not this busy. You can actually go quite fast. But today, it's a Saturday, a lot of people are out. So I had to slow down quite a bit. Now the posted speed limit is 20 kilometers per hour, but there are lots of people training on these paths. Uh, this was a group ride I did with PNS. You know, speaking of which, if you're looking for group rides, I do highly recommend checking out the PNS rides. Uh, they're super friendly. I was surprised at how most people don't speak English. I thought English would be more common uh, here in Seoul. But, uh, you know, having said that, you never know. It really depends on who shows up on the ride. But even if you join these rides and don't say a single word to anyone, still, it really helps just to ride with locals. Uh, Seoul's cycling lanes are great, but to get to any of the local climbs, you do have to get onto the roads. And the roads here are kind of hectic. Uh, there are underpasses, overpasses, and sometimes it looks like a bicycle is not supposed to be there. So just for safety and overall enjoyment, it's still, even if you don't speak Korean, better to join uh, one of these local group rides. Of course, there's Rafa as well. Uh, but just keep in mind, if you want to ride with Rafa, you do need to be an RCC member. And not only that, uh, certain rides, not all of them, but certain rides, they want you to wear the RCC kit as well. Uh, PNS, on the other hand, uh, they specifically state that you do not need to wear their kit to join their rides. I think this may be a PNS sole thing only. Other cities may be different. Now I realize that not everyone, even those that race, will want to do intervals or any kind of structured riding while on a cycling holiday. And that's kind of where the problem with Seoul is. There are no epic mountain roads. All the climbs are no more than 10 minutes. Now, if you are looking for epic cycling, don't cross Korea off the list just yet. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a bit, but let's just stick with Seoul for now. There's a popular route here called the Five Hills route. I'll put a link to the route down below. It's a pretty big ride. Most riders will take over five hours to complete it. It's great, but it's not epic. I'm not trying to shit on the cycling here in Seoul. For those that live here, it's great to have this option. And the roads out east are really quiet and beautiful. But if you're traveling from a faraway place to ride this, you may be underwhelmed. Seoul does have a lot to offer. It's a really beautiful city. And there's lots of cool architecture and museums. And I feel like there's a lot to do off the bike. Also, there's lots of great specialty coffee shops. And of course, there's the food. It's probably the main reason I came here. I am Korean, I grew up with Korean food, so I love it. I just feel like it's really healthy. Epic cycling in Korea. Uh, there's lots of events happening here, uh, like Grand Fondos. But if you try to Google any of them, the only result you're gonna get is Sorak Grand Fondo. It's the biggest event in the country. I think it's about 5,000 riders come out every year. 
Most of them actually drive three hours from Seoul for the event and then drive back after, which is crazy because it's 205 kilometers and 3,800 meters of climbing. I did it last year and it was fantastic. It's really beautiful out there. After doing the event, I told myself I'd come back, not for the event, but just to ride in the region. So my next video is gonna be just that. Uh, I'm gonna be going out east uh, towards that region and I'm gonna show you how to get there and what the roads look like and what exactly I mean when I say epic. So leave in the comments if you've ever cycled here in Seoul. Uh, I'm interested to know uh, what other people's experiences are and especially joining uh, group rides as foreigners not speaking any Korean.